So we now uh, are ready to uh, welcome the uh, next uh, speaker of the afternoon, Kirtana Thiagarajan. Kirtana Thiagarajan is from the from another Dutch university, from the Red Bull University of the Netherlands. And um, uh, while uh, Kirtana's uh, presentation is getting loaded, I would uh, take a minute to uh, present uh, the university to you. Red Bull University in the Netherlands prides itself. Uh, in its uh, interdisciplinary research facilities with over 17 research institutes under its umbrella. Uh, the university offers numerous scholarships and grants to students, and the international students really stand a chance to benefit from this. Uh, some of the popular scholarships include the Red Boot Scholarship Program, the Holland Scholarship Program, the Orange Tulip Scholarship, etc. Et so with that introduction, let me um, invite uh, Kintana Thiagarajan, who I can now see has uh, come onto the uh, screen. Welcome to the webinar. Yeah. Kintana, can you uh, yeah. uh, say hello? Yeah, hello, uh, Anil. Thank you for the welcome. Wonderful. So I can hear you, I can see you, and now we are starting almost yes. on time, just two, three minutes yes. late, right? 30 minutes to yourself. Kindly keep 20 yes. minutes Thank for you, presentation Anil. and 10 minutes for questions and answers. And remember, you will be required to uh, select two questions uh, for mm -hmm. prizes. The, the, the two questions. Uh, okay, and sure. answering the questions, you know, please read out the question and the answer. While selecting the name of the yes. winners, please give us the name of the winner so that we can send them the prizes next week. Yeah, and sure, this little announcement just disappear. The floor is yours. Thank you. Bye for now. Yeah, thank you. Anna. Thank you. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to today's webinar. It's a pleasure to meet you all. Uh, I'm Keetna Tyagarajan, as Anil uh, introduced. I'm uh, here on the behalf of Radboud University's India office. So, today at the webinar, we're going to be covering ways as well the Radboud University, which is a public university with a strong research focus. We're going to be looking at uh, various areas such as uh, courses offered by the university, admission requirements, application deadline, facilities provided by the university, and other services offered to the international students. So here we are looking at the Radboud University's campus, which is a very beautiful green campus. So like Anil mentioned Radboud University is located in the uh, Netherlands, uh, especially, uh, you know, specifically in the park called uh, Nijmegen. Uh, Nijmegen is located in the southeast of the Netherlands near the German border. Uh, it is the oldest city in the Netherlands and it is of Roman origin. It's a medium-sized city uh, and the inhabitants of which are 25% uh, students. So every fourth person you meet is going to be a student. So it's a real student-oriented city and it's, it, it offers a wide range of cultural activities there are plenty of cultural centers, museums, concert halls, cinema, theater, bars, cafes, shopping streets. Uh, it is also a very green city with a lot of parks. It's also considered to be one of the safest uh, city in the Netherlands. And as you can see in the map, it's also centrally located. So it's very much uh, uh, easily accessible from uh, all the airports. For example, from Amsterdam, it only takes uh, one, one and a half hours by train. So Radboud has a state of art sports center on the campus, which is one of the best university sports center in the world. It's been awarded the best university sports center in the world, which has more than 70 sports at a very economical price of 100 euros per year as the membership price. Yeah, now we're looking at the ranking of the university. Uh, being a research university, Radboud comes in the 1% of the world ranking, which is also the top 200 universities in the world, according to the Times of Higher Education ranking, the Academics ranking, or QS World rankings. And again, uh, Netherlands is one of the countries which is uh, ranked highest after US and the UK in, in regards to education. Uh, I can see a few queries uh, where students are asking my contact number which will be provided by end of the presentation. So uh, please wait for that slide. Moving on to the courses offered. The Radboud University offers students a plenty, uh, uh, opportunity to follow a master's in English in following disciplines, which is divided under seven faculties. As you can see here, which is uh, Faculty of Philosophy, Theology, and Religious Studies, Faculty of Arts, Law, Social Sciences, Science, uh, Nine Minute School of Management, and Faculty of Medical Sciences. 
We have numerous uh, programs under each of these faculties with uh, multiple specializations offered for the students. And now we're going to be looking at the facilities provided by Radboud University in terms of research. Uh, so Radboud has several major research institutes for each offering outstanding potential to students and researchers alike. So here are some examples of world prominent research facilities that are affiliated with Radboud University. So you can see Don Rose Institute for Brain Cognition and Behavior. It is one of the world's most renowned brain institute, uh, which does uh, conducts research on brain behavior and information processing. And then we have High Field Magnetic, uh, Magnetic Laboratory, uh, which has the world's, one of the world's most strongest uh, magnets. Uh, and it conducts uh, material research in high magnetic fields. Students from uh, physics and astro astronomy uh, department work with this uh, institute. And then we have uh, Max Planck Institute for Psycholinguistics, which uh, conducts research on language processing. So like I said, these are the three examples which are world renowned. We have uh, a uh, few like 17 other research institutes uh, which are interdisciplinary research, which conducts interdisciplinary research as well so these institutes are very international and they have best equipments and are run by top researchers so researchers all across europe uh, come to wrap out university uh, to such institutes to do their research so here we are seeing a uh, a few of the bachelor's program. We have a bachelor's, we offer bachelor's program in artificial intelligence, arts and cultural studies, biology, business administration, chemistry, comparative European history, computing science, economics and business economics, English language and culture, American studies, international business communication, molecular life sciences, philosophy, politics and society, and psychology. I have also provided the link below for the uh, bachelor's uh, uh, English programs, which you can uh, just make a note of and directly go and have a look at the programs and the curriculums for each of it. Now we're looking at the master's programs. We have over 50 master's programs with uh, many specializations. And here we have only the main categories men mentioned, which are business and economics, computer science, humanities, medical science, Law, Planning and Human Geography, Public Administration and Political Science, Science, Social and Behavioral Science. So for example, Computer Science has the most of, uh, demanded subjects by Indian students, which are Data Science, Cyber Security, we have Artificial Intelligence. And under Medical Science, we have various uh, medical, uh, uh, program, medical related programs, such as Biomedical Sciences, uh, Human Biology, we have uh, uh, Molecular Mechanism of uh, Diseases, and again, we have uh, planning and human geography, which cover various uh, spatial planning programs. Social and behavioral sciences cover psychology and uh, other relevant programs. And again, I've given the link here for you all to make a note of to directly go to the English uh, master's programs offered by Radboud University. So uh, we have now we are now looking at the person, uh, teaching style uh, of, of Radboud University. So Radboud University has a very personal uh, teaching style wherein the seminars are very small and the students are encouraged to work in team and be very interactive in class. So it's going to be a very diverse group and students are very much in encouraged to develop their own opinion and uh, uh, voice out their questions and be proactive. And each student get, uh, get to interact with the student advice if they are facing any issues or if they need any help with their studies. We are now looking at uh, various support services provided uh, to the students, especially uh, international students. So uh, before you arrive, uh, after you get the admission, we provide you uh, help with visa, applying the visa. So the students do not have to worry about uh, applying it on their own. All they have to do is provide all the documents, necessary documents that we mentioned. And we also uh, provide the students housing for the first year. The university uh, finds an accommodation for the students. And upon arrival, uh, the students are given a very warm skipole welcome, which is the uh, Amsterdam airport. So students are picked up from the airport and uh, uh, brought to the university. Uh, and also students have a very uh, nice orientation week for, uh, for seven days, which, uh, which has a very warm welcome. And students are taken around the campus and the city. And you also are introduced to your fellow students, which is a very great way to start your academic year. 
and during the program students can uh, uh, students have uh, access to their student advisors, mentors, and tutors with whatever queries they have and whatever issues they're facing, they always have access to their mentors and advisors. And on graduation, uh, Radford University provides the students a career service, which uh, which includes uh, a CV check, job application training, uh, personal branding. We help students in uh, uh, building your uh, uh, you know, communication and personal branding. Uh, individual, they also do individual career orientation. And we uh, get the students familiarized to various web portal with job vacancies and uh, career events that are happening uh, in and around my meeting so students can take part. We are now looking at the uh, tuition fees. So for the uh, bachelor's program, the tuition fees varies uh, around from 800, 800 euros to 11,466 euros. So for medical sciences and sciences program, it's on the higher end. For the master's program, uh, the fees for uh, Indian students uh, comes up to, uh, starts from 11,500 euros and goes up to 12,645 euros. So you can uh, uh, view the website to know the specific uh, cost for your program. I can also help you with that. I can also help you locate that. And uh, the living cost mentioned below is uh, 900 euros per month, which is as per the European standards. Uh, but approximately an Indian student would spend around 600 to 700, but that again depends on the accommodation that you choose and how you choose to uh, uh, choose to uh, eat food. Like, are you planning to eat every day? Are you planning to eat outside? So the expense is totally up to the students to manage. And now we're looking at the uh, financial matter, which includes the scholarship uh, details. So Radboard has a number of scholarships provided for the students. Uh, some are given by the uh, University for International Students, and some are program-specific scholarship. So you, the first one we see here is Radboard Scholarship Program, which is provided to the international students. You can apply for a Radboard Scholarship while doing your application. Uh, and students either get the EU fees, which is uh, which the students are either granted the EU fees, which is 200 uh, plus uh, European uh, euros, uh, or you get a full fee waiver with uh, with visa cost covered as well. It varies as per the student's profile. And then uh, some of the scholarships are provided by the government, which is uh, Holland Scholarship Program and Orange Student Scholarship Program, which can be directly applied uh, on the website called MESO, which is the Netherlands Education Support Office. And then we also have, uh, like I mentioned, program specific scholarship, which can be found on every program's page under the scholarship uh, segment. And uh, talking about working as students, the students uh, uh, can work up to uh, 16 hours a week, which is the maximum limit for the students. The students have various uh, job opportunities. So uh, in the campus, you can work as a teaching assistant, you can work in the cafes, cafeterias, but all of these are subjected to the availability at that point. If not, students can also find a job in the city center. But again, we wouldn't recommend students to work in the beginning because the education is quite demanding. And we would recommend students to get first familiarized with the uh, uh, system there, get used to the uh, curriculum, and then probably look at uh, working uh, part time. So here uh, we have listed the uh, various uh, admission requirements. You can probably take a screen in short of this if, if you want it for reference later. So the bachelors, uh, if students are in the Indian school certificate system, you will have to have mandatory five subjects with uh, an average of 75 percentage uh, pass mark. And if you have uh, all your senior school certificate, CBSE or IEP, you need five subjects again and uh, with a pass grade of A1, A2 or B1 level. All the diversity and when we uh, like comments, we need uh, IELTS academic or local. Students can also take up uh, CA with Cambridge certificate of pronounced English. So in IELTS, we need overall a uh, minimum overall score of 6.5, uh, and in total, we need an overall of 80 score. Coming to the master's requirement, uh, we need uh, the student to have uh, have the bachelor's in the relevant area because. Master's programs, uh, program in Radboard is structured in such a way that it's all based on your bachelor's knowledge. And then uh, these are the few uh, 
degrees which are uh, accepted by Radboud University. Uh, those are, uh, you have uh, honors in Bachelors of Arts, Bachelors of Science, General or Honors in Bachelors of Commerce or Business Administration, Bachelors of Engineering or Technology, Agriculture, Dentistry, Medicine, Law, Bachelors of Divinity and Theology, uh, which, is, which has to be equivalent to a Dutch Bachelors. And the degree has to be obtained from a uh, university which, which is of that level. And again, coming to the language requirement, you can either take up IELTS, uh, IELTS, uh, which is uh, which in which we need minimum uh, overall score of 6.5 band score. In TOEFL, we will need overall score of 90, and uh, in Cambridge, you will need minimum C. So here we come to the deadlines. Uh, since we are now looking at uh, September intake, I'm only talking about September here. Uh, so for uh, application with scholarship, the students will have to finish their application before the first of March. And uh, for uh, other courses, first of April is the deadline. I would recommend the students to finish your application as soon, uh, as, soon as possible as you can uh, plan your finances accordingly. So we are now looking at uh, the USPs of Blackboard University. As I mentioned earlier, we are in the top 1% of the world ranking. And we've been voted best traditional university in Netherlands seven times between 2012 to 2019. We have a wide range of study options for students. And extensive freedom of choice. You decide, the students may decide which specialization and subject choice is most appropriate for you. We offer you a great deal of choice in, and in many cases you can put together your own custom made program based on your own interest. This has resulted in uh, stimulating research and interesting study choices in our students in the past. And uh, the degree that you'll be getting is internationally recognized diploma. Personal, we have a personal approach to teaching, so the students find it very easy and uh, uh, you know, comfortable in approaching the faculty, uh, clearing their doubts and approach, uh, voicing out their opinion. We provide excellent service and facilities. Bradford strives for the highest quality also with its service. So this has even been acknowledged by the European Commission, who recently stated that Bradford University has an impressive range of activities for outgoing and coming students and a high sense of concern for quality. So you also get to build a valuable network as you will be uh, working with uh, various uh, professors and researchers. The career prospects are really good. All the students uh, find a job uh, once they they graduate. It is not a difficult thing in Netherlands, and especially when you graduate from a research university which comes into 1% of the world rank. And Bradford campus in, in Nijmegen is considered to be the greenest and most beautiful in Netherlands. So students really enjoy uh, being in the campus and going around Nijmegen city. So here you have uh, my contact details. We are based out of Chennai, and I have provided my address and my phone number. For bachelor student, the contact details are over here. Please all take a screenshot so you can contact us after the uh, after the webinar is over. And we also have uh, the other information such as the website, the email address for gentle queries the Facebook page, Twitter, and other social media. You can also uh, follow us on social media to be updated with uh, what we are uh, uh, doing on a regular basis. So I think we have come to the end of the presentation now. Anil, would you like to join us? I think we can go to the question answer session. eight minutes that we have to questions and answers. So if you look at the you know window on the screen, you will see that there are a lot of questions which students have yes. been asking you. And I would invite you to pick out the questions and uh, read out the question and give the answer. And uh, yes, I will do that, give us uh, give us a hands up whenever you find a question good enough to get an answer, uh, get a prize from us. Yes, definitely. Thank you.
Thank you. Uh, so I have a question here, which is, uh, what are the entry criteria for masters in material science and also sustainable energy? Unfortunately, we do not have uh, those two courses in Bradford University. So the living cost, like I mentioned, uh, according to the European standard, we have uh, provided uh, 900 euros per month as the living cost. But approximately an Indian student would spend around 600 to 700. But this again depends on uh, the kind of accommodation that you choose the uh, kind of living that you choose, like how you're going to plan your food every day, are you going to cook or are you going to eat from outside. So keep it around 7 lakhs for a year for Indian students. Uh, yes, you can get an admission in PhD uh, with age 44. It shouldn't be a problem, age is not a limit, but PhD in the Netherlands is more like a job position. So you have to directly apply for uh, PhD uh, with the professors. You cannot apply for it like a course how you like how you apply in India. Uh, yes, uh, even though uh, your medium of language uh, uh, in your uh, bachelor's was in English. Uh, we will need IELTS because anybody who holds an Indian passport, Indian uh, who is an international student for that board, needs an IELTS examination, IELTS examination to be given. But if you would like some time, you could also give the exam after you get the admission uh, with a condi uh, conditional offer letter and then take up the IELTS examination if you need some time for preparation. So like again, uh, about PhD, you will have to check the website directly for the ongoing research facilities. I see somebody who is asking about uh, pharmacology and toxic toxicology. You will have to again check the Radboud's website to, to see the ongoing uh, PhD programs. I can share the link later by email once I get your contact details. So Anil, I would like to uh, nominate uh, Krishna Raj Venu Gopal, who has asked this question about IELTS as one of the uh, students. How do people of Netherlands treat Indians or foreigners? I would also like to uh, uh, nominate uh, Hisham, who has asked this question for the voucher. So uh, people in the Netherlands are very warm, and there is no racism faced by Indian uh, Indians so far. We've had really good response from our students, and uh, they, are, they are treated very warmly. And it's a very, very safe country for anybody from, for anybody from India or any foreigners for that matter. People are very straightforward. They are very, uh, very, very open. So students find it very easy to communicate and uh, you know get along with uh, other people from the uh, Netherlands. And English is also uh, the language that everybody speaks, so getting along is also easy. So I think we've come to the end of uh, question and answer session also, and I don't have many questions, so I think uh, we're done with that. All right, thank you very much, Kirtana. I uh, I would like to thank you very much for uh, your uh, contribution to the webinars today. Uh, these webinars are being organized as part of the European Higher Education Virtual Fair as uh, part of the EU's uh, public diplomacy and outreach uh, in India. And this is a project funded by the European Union, under which we are providing a platform to uh, European universities to reach out to Indian students and uh, to uh, give them uh, uh, authentic, authoritative information about higher education opportunities in the European Union. And as part of that, uh, today uh, we have been uh, holding this uh, series of webinars uh, in uh, two parallel uh, virtual uh, uh, studios. And uh, the one where we are right now talking is the uh, Studio B. Um, and this is the B a series of uh, webinars going on since, uh, uh, since 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We've had sessions from uh, different universities from Finland, Malta, Lithuania, Ireland, France, and Netherlands. And in fact, uh, 
back to back, so we've had two uh, Netherlands uh, universities. Um, first, we had the uh, University of Penn. Now we had the Red Bull University. Both of uh, that universities are then known, um, and we are internationally renowned. And we've had good presentations uh, from these two universities. So uh, we we'll would like to really uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, also, thank you, Manu. Also, uh, you have identified already, and my colleagues are taking note of the names of uh, Indian students who have asked me the most interesting questions. So, with that, uh, we we'll come to the end of uh, this presentation. The next uh, speaker is uh, already present in the virtual room, I believe. So, thank you, and uh, uh, with that, we bid uh, goodbye to Kirtanath Yagarajan.